Good morning, my name is Stephanie Zadrovac. I graduated from Connecticut College in 1990 which a with a major in theater. Today, I am an award-winning playwright, and I am also the mother of twin two-and-a-half-year-old sons, one of whom has a rare pediatric lung disease called neuroendocrine hyperplasia of infancy, or knee-high. There are only 250 known cases of knee-high, and there is no known cure. There is one treatment, which is that my son Colin is attached to an oxygen tank 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, before you think I'm going to completely depress you this morning, I will cut to the chase and tell you that of the rare pediatric lung disease, knee-high is actually a good one. Colin will not die from it, nor will he need a lung transplant. And it is expected that sometime in the next 10 years, he will outgrow the need for supplemental oxygen. So what does it mean to be an emerging playwright and the mother of a child with a serious and rare illness? Well, financially, things are pretty tight. Most days, my hair is sort of shapeless and unflattering. <laughs> Often, I'm up all night with a very cute boy while the stack of books next to my bed goes unread. My husband and I survived on frozen pizza for the better part of a year, and I gained 15 pounds. <laughs> it's not that different from college. <laughs> um, but that's not the part of my college experience that I came here to talk about. Um, when my parents dropped me off on this gorgeous, pristine campus uh, 26 years ago, I knew two things. The first was that I wanted to act in as many plays as I possibly could on this very stage. And the other was that my mother's bone cancer would likely take her life before I graduated. Both things happened. So how do you have a great beginning when your circumstances aren't so great? When the problems and perils of your classmates seem somewhat trivial? Do you just keep your head down and volunteer for the Saturday night shift in the library? I did that. <laughs> do you wear a lot of black and sit in a corner in the dining hall and scowl at people? I did a little of that too. Or do you realize that college is incredibly precious time and try to make the most of it? Eventually, that's the approach that I took, and I came to share five things that I learned in my time that helped me thrive and continue to help me thrive when circumstances aren't perfect. The first is to just show up. That one's kind of easy. Um, most of the current students here will probably not want to hear this, but when I was a student at Connecticut College, I did not skip a single class. <laughs> It was really one of the best things I ever did was to just attend every lecture um, and sit and learn and listen. Uh, it continues to serve me in my professional life, and it has taught me that you never know where opportunity and inspiration will come from. Attending every class also helped me earn a 97 in my required math class, which, if you know me, is something of a miracle. <laughs> Uh, the second thing is to find an outlet. Now, for me, that's easy. Theater is a collaborative art form with a built-in emotional outlet. Um, the great plays ask big questions, and um, it was just such a gift to be able to speak the words of O'Neill and Chekhov and Shakespeare or laugh my way through a rehearsal for Noel Coward and John Guare. The third thing is to build community. Now, theater people are an odd breed, but they are my tribe. Um, in my time here on this stage, I performed in over seven plays. I sang with the Schwifts. I danced in dance concerts. If you ask me today, I could not tell you one line from the play. I couldn't do a dance step. I don't remember the harmonies. But I remember every single person that I worked with, many of whom are still my friends. We still give each other comfort, and our friendships provide an extraordinary context in our lives. Number four is to stretch yourself. Actually, three of the best classes I ever took at Connecticut College had nothing at all to do with my major field. It was a course in psychology, a creative writing poetry workshop, and a survey uh, modern art history course that I threw into my schedule senior year. 
Uh, in the psychology class, of course, it fostered my interest in human behavior, but it also taught me how to truly question things, how to become a skeptic in a good way. In 1988, I had no dreams of being a writer. I took a poetry class, and my professor encouraged me to, to submit some of my poems for the English Department Awards. That year, I won the Benjamin T. Marshall Prize for Poetry. I have never written another poem. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like to think that the confidence of that experience was lingering somewhere in the back of my mind when, at the age of 38, I left a fairly successful career as an actor and decided to become a playwright. Why not? Um, as far as art history goes, I thought we were just going to sit in a dark room, memorize a bunch of paintings, memorize the names of a bunch of painters. And instead, we were discussing politics and history and religion and pop culture. And suddenly, everything I had learned at Connecticut College synthesized, and I was asked to speak with authority from my own point of view. It was extraordinary. The last thing I learned at the end of college is to ask for help. When I was a senior, my fellow theater major and friend Jody Simon wrote a play called No Code. Uh, it was a theater outreach piece for her psychology thesis, and she asked me to be in it. She had written the play based on her own experiences with her father's death uh, from cancer. And we performed the play for a bunch of New London high school students. And afterwards, there was a talk back where both Jody and I shared our experiences of losing a parent at an early age. After the show, my dean, Dean King, came up and said, you know, I knew about Jody's father, but why didn't I know that your mother was dying of cancer? Uh, <laughs> it had never occurred to me that there were resources available to help me and that I didn't have to work so hard all the time to keep it together. Um, there is always hope, help and hope available to you if you just learn how to ask for it. And that day I did. I didn't have any idea at Connecticut College that the lessons I learned here about art and illness, pain and perseverance would follow me quite so closely in my life. Just this month, I uh, accepted my first large play, new play commission and my son, Colin, was also diagnosed with autism. However, I have, what I learned at Connecticut College is something I keep with me. Uh, I remind myself that great beginnings do not have to be perfect beginnings, that struggle is food for the mind and the soul, struggle makes us human, struggle is the stuff of great plays and great literature and great art, and sometimes struggle even gets you a 97 in your math requirement. <laughs> I know that I'm just one of so many students for whom a Connecticut College education provided a great foundation in all areas of their life. So I'd like to thank you for having me here today.